ethics for IT workers and IT users. IT professionals. Let's first define profession. When we say profession, it is a calling that requires specialized knowledge and often long and intensive academic preparation. Are IT workers professionals? IT workers are not recognized as professionals because they are not licensed by the state or federal government. This distinction is important. For example, in malpractice lawsuits, as many courts have ruled that IT workers are not liable for malpractice because they do not meet the legal definition of a professional. That's from a quote from the United States Code from a legal perspective. Professional relationships that must be managed by IT workers. IT worker must be able to build professional relationship and manage it with the employers, clients, suppliers, other professionals, IT users, and society. IT workers and employers have a critical, multifaceted relationship that requires ongoing effort by both parties to keep it strong. An IT worker and an employer typically agree on fundamental aspects of this relationship before the worker accepts an employment offer. These issues may include job title, gender performance expectations, specific work responsibilities, drug testing requirements, dress code, location of employment, salary, work hours, and company benefits. Many other aspects of this relationship may be addressed in a company's policy and procedures, manual, or in the company's code of conduct, if one exists. These issues may include protection of company secrets, vacation policy, time off for a funeral, or an illness in the family, tuition reimbursement, and use of company resources, including computers and networks. Let's now move on to the relationships between IT workers and employers. As the stewards of an organization's IT resources, IT workers must set an example and enforce policies regarding the ethical use of information technologies. IT workers often have the skills and knowledge to abuse systems and data or to enable others to do so. Software piracy is an area in which IT workers may be tempted to violate laws and policies. Although end users often get the blame when it comes to using illegal copies of commercial software, software piracy in a corporate setting is sometimes directly traceable to IT staff members. It's either they allow it to happen or they actively engage in it, often to reduce IT-related spending. Let's move on to the Business Software Alliance or the what we call BSBA, I mean BSA. It is a trade group that represents the world's largest software and hardware manufacturers. Its mission is to stop the unauthorized copying of software produced by its members. BSA is funded both through juice based on member companies, software revenues, and the rule settlements from companies that commit piracy. Whistleblowing. It is another issue that can create friction between employers and IT workers. It is an effort by an employee to attract attention to a negligent, illegal, unethical, abusive, or dangerous act by a company that threatens the public interest. Whistleblowers often have special information based on their experience or a position within the offending organization. For example, an employee of a chip manufacturing company may know that the chemical process used to make the chips is dangerous to employees and the general public. A conscientious employee would call the problem to management's attention and try to correct it by working with appropriate resources within the company. Let's move on to the relationships between IT workers and clients. 
IT workers provide services to clients. Sometimes those clients are co-workers who are part of the same organization as the IT worker. In relationships between IT workers and clients, each party agree to provide something of value to the other. Generally speaking, the IT worker provides hardware, software, or services at a certain cost and within a given time frame. For example, an IT worker might agree to implement a new accounts payable software package that meets a client's requirements. The client provides compensation, access to key contacts, and perhaps a workspace. This relationship is usually documented in contractual terms. Who does not what? Who does the what? When? The work begins. How long it will take? How much the client pays? And so on. Conflict of interest. One potential ethical problem that can interfere with the relationship between IT workers and their clients involves IT consultants or auditors who recommend their own products and services or those of an affiliated vendor to remedy a problem they have detected. A conflict of interest means a conflict between the IT workers or the IT firm's self-interest and the interest of the client. For example, an IT consulting firm might be hired to assess a firm's IT strategic plan. After a few weeks of analysis, the consulting firm might provide a poor rating for the existing strategy and insist that its proprietary products and services are required to develop a new strategic plan. Such findings would raise questions about the vendor's objectivity and whether its recommendations can be trusted. Fraud. It is the crime of obtaining goods, services, or property through deception or trickery. Fraudulent misrepresentation occurs when a person consciously decides to induce another person to rely and act on a misrepresentation. To prove fraud in a court of law, prosecutors must demonstrate the following elements. The wrongdoer made a false representation of material fact. The wrongdoer intended to receive or deceive the innocent party. The innocent party justifiably relied on the misrepresentation and the innocent party was injured. Misrepresentation. It is the misstatement or incomplete statement of a material fact. If the misrepresentation causes the other party to enter a contract, that party may have the legal right to cancel the contract or seek reimbursement for damages. Siri, the voice-activated software that comes with the Apple iPhone, has delighted many iPhone users. However, not everyone has had a positive experience. Shortly after one user in New York purchased an iPhone 4S, he realized that Siri was not performing as expected. When he asked Siri for directions, it did not understand the question, or after a long delay, gave incorrect directions. As a result, the user filed a lawsuit against Apple claiming that the advertising for the Siri amounted to intentional misrepresentation and that Apple's claims about the Siri software were misleading and deceptive. Attorneys for this user are considering turning the case into a class action against Apple that point twenty or point two zero. Let's move on to the breach of contract. Breach of contract occurs when one party fails to meet the terms of a contract. Further, a material breach of contract occurs when a party fails to perform certain express or implied obligations which impairs or destroys the essence of the contract. Because there is no clear line between a minor breach and a material breach, Determination is made on a case-to-case -case 
or case-by-case -case basis. When there has been a material breach of contract, the non-bridging party can either rescind the contract, seek restitution of any compensation paid under the contract to the breaching party, and be discharged from any further performance under the contract. Or treat the contract as being in effect and sue the breaching party to recover damages. Let's now move on to the relationships between IT workers and suppliers. IT workers deal with many different hardware, software, and service providers. Most IT workers understand that building a good working relationship with suppliers encourages the flow of useful in communication as well as the sharing of ideas. IT workers can develop good relationships with suppliers by dealing fairly with them and not making unreasonable demands. Threatening to replace a supplier who can deliver needed equipment tomorrow when the normal industry lead time is one week is aggressive behavior that does not help build a good working relationship. Suppliers strive to maintain a positive relationship with their customers in order to make and increase sales. To achieve this goal, they may sometimes engage in unethical actions. For example, offering an IT worker a gift that is actually intended as a bribe. Clearly, IT workers should not accept a bribe from a vendor. And this, they must be careful when considering that constitutes a bribe or considering what constitutes a bribe. What do we mean by bribery? It is the act of providing money, property, or favors to someone in business or government. It is in order to obtain a business advantage. An obvious example is a software supplier, sales representative, who offers money to another company's employee to get its business. This type of bribe is often referred to as a kickback or a payoff. The person who offers a bribe commits a crime when the offer is made and the recipient is guilty of a crime if he or she accepts the bribe. Foreign Corrupt, Mar uh, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act or the what we call FCPA. It makes a crime to bribe a foreign official. It makes a crime to bribe a foreign official, a foreign political party official, or a candidate for foreign political office. The act applies to any U.S. citizen or company and to any company with shares listed on any U.S. stock exchange. However, a bribe is not a crime if the payment was lawful under the laws of the foreign country in which it was paid. The FCPA also requires corporations whose securities are listed in the United States to meet U.S. accounting standards by having an adequate system of internal controls, including maintaining books and records that accurately and fairly reflect their transactions. The goal of this standard is to prevent companies from using slash funds or other means to disguise payments to foreign officials. A firm's business practices and its accounting information systems must be frequently audited by both internal and outside auditors to ensure that they meet these standards. Let's now move on to the relationships between IT workers and IT professionals. Professionals often feel a degree of loyalty to the other members of their profession. As a result, they are often quick to help each other obtain new positions but slow to criticize each other in public. Professionals also have an interest in their profession as a whole because how it is perceived affects how individual members are viewed and treated. A number of ethical problems can arise among members of the IT profession. One of the most common resume or the one of the most common is the what we call resume inflation which involves lying on a resume by, for example, claiming competence in an IT skill that is in high demand, even though an IT worker might benefit in the short term from exaggerating his or her qualifications such as an action can hurt the profession and the individual in the long run. 
Here are some most frequent areas of resume falsehood or exaggeration. Area of exaggeration and how to uncover the truth. For example, dates of employment. It must be uncovered through the thorough reference check. Job titles, also through a thorough reference check. Criminal record, it's a criminal background check. Inflated salary through reference check. Education, that's verification of education claims and with universities and other training organizations. Professional licenses, verification of license with accrediting agency. And working of fictitious company, thorough background check. Source line is a, is a vast, most common resume lies. The letters, July 17, 2019, or 2009. Let's move on to the relationships between IT workers and IT users. IT user, it refers to a person who uses the hardware or software product. The term distinguishes end users from the IT workers who develop, install, service, and support the product. IT users need a product to deliver organizational benefits or to increase their productivity. IT workers have a duty to understand the user's needs and capabilities and to deliver products and services that best meet those needs, but it is subject, of course, of, to the budget and time constraints. IT workers also have key responsibility to establish an environment that supports ethical behavior by users. Let's move on to the relationships between IT workers and society. Regulatory laws establish safety standards for products and services to protect the public. However, these laws are less than perfect and they cannot safeguard against all negative side effects of a product or process. The actions of an IT worker can affect society. For example, a systems analyst may design a computer-based control system to monitor a chemical manufacturing process. A failure or an error in the system may put workers or residents near the plant at risk. As a result, IT workers have a relationship with members of society who may be affected by their actions. There is currently no single formal organization of IT workers that takes responsibility for establishing and maintaining standards that protect the public. Those are the content of our topic pertaining to the what we call ethics of uh, IT workers and IT users or ethics for IT workers and IT users. I hope you've learned from what I had just shared and uh, we'll be having more of this in the future. Thank you.